I think he's in, why Fox must play Origin after perfect response, to snub. Dual Code International Wendell Saylor has declared he would be more worried about Queensland's chances of Origin victory if New South Wales selected Josh Adokar for Game 2, while Braithen Astor believes the veteran Flyers' response to his selection snub should see him return to the Blues' side. Addo Carr snaffled a hat-trick on the weekend, sending a message to New South Wales selectors about his worth to the Blues' side. He has scored 10 tries in 12 Origin appearances, and has typically been solid defensively. Speaking at KO Sports' launch of their live and exclusive US Open golf coverage, Saylor told foxsports.com.au that he believes New South Wales are a more dangerous prospect with Addo Carr in the fold. Of course, I'd be more worried about QLD's hopes, he's a finisher. People talk about his height but isn't Brian so small? You can't worry about that because there wasn't that many cross-field kicks in that game, so you can't plan for something that's not going to be there. And I think New South Wales forwards didn't roll through the middle like they usually do. Panthers winger Toe was joined by Sydney Roosters beast Daniel Tupo, as New South Wales coach Brad Fittler opted for extra height in defence. Saylor added, I don't know how the Fox is not there. He's one of the best finishers I've seen in a long time, I love his energy and on Monday I was just so happy for him. In a side that's coming last or second last to play like that him and Burton, their combination is unbelievable. Even Burton should be looked at for Origin too, he's a fantastic player. But 10-game New South Wales representative, Brayton Astor said, the reason they didn't pick Josh was because he wasn't playing his best so they put a rocket up him and said, you're not playing game one, how are you going to respond? He responded perfectly, so put him in. That's what they wanted from him, they wanted him to play better, they wanted him to show how much he wanted it and he has. I think he's in, in my opinion. Meanwhile, Saylor revealed he thought New South Wales would win the series opener, despite tipping his native state. I was stoked the Maroons won. I tipped Queensland but I honestly thought New South Wales would beat us. I thought they still had a good enough squad to beat us and I probably didn't give Billy enough credit for their defence. That's as good as I've seen them defend in a long time, and Cam Munster is a superstar. There's two to go and they should feel confident but I'm wary of New South Wales in Perth, because last time we went over there they rattled us, he added. One of the other key selection decisions facing Fittler's New South Wales is whether to pick Ryan Papenhuysen despite him having not played in a month. But Anasta believes he's the fittest player in Melbourne, and he can definitely get a run. Yeah, they can pick him. He's the fittest player in Melbourne, I know that for a fact, him, Grant and Munster. They can definitely pick him, but I don't know if they will after not playing for over a month. They've got the same conundrum there with Luttrell, Mitchell. I'd pick him because I think he'd be fine, he's a machine but that's not my decision. It's a tough one. And both Anasta and Saylor had their say on the situation facing Daniel Tupo and Kotonai Staggs, who were both selected to play for Tonga in the nation's upcoming test match on June 25 against New Zealand, just 24 hours before Origins Game 2. Both players have reportedly committed to playing Origin if selected. But Anasta said, Staggs, I'd think, New South Wales, pick him so he'll play Origin, but I reckon Josh Adokar will get selected so Tupo will play for Tonga, that's my early prediction. Saylor said, I think they'll stick with New South Wales. Freddie would be happy for them to go and play for Tonga, but to be honest if Tupo decided to go there, Josh Adokar can replace him. Michael Maguire breaks silence on Tigers sacking, slams reports of player rift. Axe Tigers coach Michael Maguire has broken his silence following his ugly exit from the struggling club, having been shown the door after winning just three times from 13 attempts this season. Maguire told News Corp he won't give up his NRL coaching dream, declaring, I've never walked away and I never will, and proclaiming, I've still got a burning passion to keep coaching. 
and he hit out at long-running claims of a rift with the Tigers playing group, saying his reputation doesn't worry him. We are all different. I'm sure my players say I'm a little bit different, Maguire told News Corp of his coaching style. I can handle that criticism, it doesn't worry me because they all know I'm coming from the right spot to achieve with them as a group. It's your staff, your players, the camaraderie, when you get that connection and everyone in sync, that's what makes the big teams what they are. You do a lot of work to be able to achieve but sometimes it doesn't turn out as planned. His three and a half years at the Tigers certainly didn't work out as planned, with Maguire leaving with 18 months remaining on his contract. But he says he never contemplated quitting, despite a raft of criticism and a long-running club review leaving the axe hanging over his head for months on end. Yeah, I did wake up to daily headlines, but quitting never crossed my mind, he told News Corp. I wouldn't say it wasn't a challenge at the time, but we are all built a little differently. When you work your way to the top, that's what drives you to want more. To be honest, I respect the scrutiny, because that's part of the game. Maguire is currently with the NZ team, preparing the Kiwi side for a one-off international against mate Ma Tonga on Saturday June 25th. And he didn't shy away from making bold selections with the side, with Eels playmaker Dylan Brown beating Warriors veteran Sean Johnson for a starting role. Brown is one of eight possible debutants in the team. Whether it's at international or NRL level, coaching is what I enjoy doing, Maguire told the Sydney Morning Herald. If I'm lucky enough to move into another opportunity, I'm going to throw myself in, no different to what I have before. I'm coaching now and where the coaching journey takes me, it will find itself. But winning another NRL Premiership remains his ultimate goal. I've still got a burning passion to keep coaching. It's the one thing I really do love, he told News Corp. I just want to win another Premiership. I want to taste that success again. I had a taste of it in the NRL and overseas, at Wigan, and that's why I love doing it. I want to be successful at this year's World Cup and I'd love another chance to win another trophy in the NRL. The $400,000 twist that could mean no winners in tug of war for NRL's most coveted new coach. The West Tigers and Canterbury Banks Town Bulldogs are locked in a gripping tug of war over Penrith assistant coach Cameron Seraldo, with both clubs hoping to make the gifted mentor their next head coach. But he's now been tipped to snub both and remain at the Panthers, in the hopes of a shock third option next season. Tigers CEO Justin Pascoe made a public pitch for young coach to choose the joint venture club, declaring the struggling franchise a real opportunity. He is one of many options. Certainly his credentials are exactly that, he has obviously done a lovely job with what he has done out with Penrith, he is certainly in the mix as others are too, Pasco said on Fox League's NRL 360 on Wednesday night. If you really delve into the fundamentals of this club and where we are at, I don't think it is a tough sell at all, I think it is a real opportunity, the foundations are set there. Seraldo recently toured the Tigers' unopened centre of excellence and met with powerbrokers at the club, and has also spoken to influential Bulldogs figure Phil Gould, meaning the fight is on for the coach in waiting. There is pretty good mail around today that Gus Gould has held talks with Cameron Seraldo as well, and that he may have toured the facilities as well, I am not too sure about the second part, Brent Breed said. But he has definitely talked to Cameron Seraldo, so the fight is on, the tug of war is on. But Phil Rothfield believes that taking on either of the two struggling clubs would place the young coach under quite significant stress and it might just leave Seraldo waiting for a better opportunity. There is a lot of people tipping he is going to stay at Penrith, he is on nearly $400,000 as an assistant coach, Rothfield said. He is going to get quite a significant pay rise here for a guy that has never coached a first grade rugby league team, Braith and Asta replied.
He is going to get quite significant stress and he is a young man, 37 years old, young family, they aren't the most appealing franchises Canterbury and West's Tigers, Rothfield added. I think he might wait a year and see what else comes up, would St George come up next year? I don't know, are they a bit more appealing? I don't know. Despite the risks of hiring a rookie coach, Seraldo presents an unusual prospect given he has essentially taken charge of the Panthers in recent days while regular head coach Ivan Cleary battles injury. If you listen to people he has basically been coaching Penrith at the moment because Ivan has that knee problem, he has been in hospital, Rothfield said. Cameron has done a lot of the coaching out there at the moment, so we can say he hasn't coached an NRL team, but he sort of is at the moment, in a lot of ways. The Storm and Blues have suffered a blow with Ryan Papenheisen cut from Melbourne's reserves due to a positive COVID-19 test that has ruled him out of the Broncos' clash. Ryan Papenheisen's return to the NRL will be delayed due to a positive COVID-19 test, the Storm said in a statement. The fullback was named on the extended bench for Storm's Round 15 match with Brisbane on Friday night but will now have to spend seven days in isolation, having been replaced by young gun Jack Howarth. Meanwhile, Warriors skipper Adam Panua Blake could make a timely return into Stacey Jones' side and Luke Keary is firming to play for the Roosters despite earlier concussion fears. And Newcastle coach Adam O'Brien says he expects star Callum Palmer to recover from concussion and play on the weekend. Why Freddie could roll the dice with a big blues selection call as two-horse race emerges. Brad Fittler's selection call for the number 14 jersey came under fire after the Blues' defeat to Queensland in the State of Origin opener. Panthers centre Stephen Crichton was picked to play the utility role and failed to make a big impact when injected in the game in the 52nd minute, sparking a debate surrounding who should take the role in Game 2. According to the Daily Telegraph's Buzz Rothfield, Crichton will still be in the Blues' side in a starting position, likely displacing Kotonai Staggs, and proposed it is a two-horse race for the number 14 jersey. There is talk that Stephen Crichton might go into the starting lineup, so we will be looking for a new 14, Rothfield said on NRL 360. I think it is a two-horse race, Nicka Hines and Matt Burton, who had that sensational game against Parramatta, I texted Freddie today, he is on a day off, he came back to me with a text. I pressed him and I said there is a lot of mail about Matt Burton coming in on your bench, he came back to me and said, I will be watching the footy closely on the weekend. Watfield explained that he believes Fiddler may have his side picked before the Bulldogs Sunday clash with the Tigers, hindering his chances. Now with Burton the problem he has got, he doesn't play till 4 o'clock on Sunday, I think the team will be picked before 4 o'clock Sunday, so he is up against the West Tigers, Rothfield said. I think he would be an outstanding inclusion on the bench, he can play 5-8. But the Daily Telegraph's Brent Reid and NRL 360 host Brayton Astor proposed another option, hoping to count a Queensland pair of elite dummy halves. I'd be going Api Karoisai, Reid said. I don't think it matters they are playing at 4 o'clock. I like the idea of Karoisai, I think it is a counterpunch to Hunt and Grant, Karoisai and Cook, I think Karoisai starts the game even, you have Cook coming off the bench having an impact, or vice versa, Anasta said. They need punch, they need spark off the bench which they didn't have in the game one, I think that that'd be a good option, I don't know if that is the way they are going to go. I don't know if Hines is quite ready for that 14 jersey in origin, he will be one day, Burton would be a really good option. We know that Burton can play 5 8th and centre, but his last off-season at Penrith they trained him on the edge all off-season, thinking he'd be a running edge forward, Rothfield added. He could easily play, he'd be great for New South Wales, Anasta said. How Tigers jumped the gun on Lalua as details of Rooster's honesty session emerge.
the West Tigers aren't the only club who's met with Penrith's NRL coach in waiting Cameron Seraldo. Canterbury Bank's down kingpin Phil Gould has also had a sit-down with the in-demand Panthers assistant and his agent George Mimes. While Seraldo's tour of the West Tigers Centre of Excellence on Monday was made public within a matter of hours, Gould is attempting to keep his coaching candidate cards wrapped up tightly so no one can see. It'll be fascinating to see what type of spin Gus tries to put on the meeting with Seraldo. Don't forget these two have history with Gould promoting Seraldo to being the Panthers head coach back in 2018 when he sacked Anthony Griffin. Seraldo is also great mates with ex-Bulldogs coach Trent Barrett so will be well versed in how the landscape is shaped at Belmore. Panthers supremo Brian Fletcher still firmly believes Seraldo may well opt to remain with the Premiers for another season in 2023 as an assistant coach. As it sits at the moment, Seraldo is the highest paid assistant coach in the game and rightly so given his football IQ. Much has been made about the West's Tigers being prepared to table Seraldo a five-year offer but in reality it's his agent Mimis who has put those terms to the club. Given the way the Tigers have cycled through Jason Taylor, Ivan Cleary and Michael Maguire in the last six seasons it's a smart play from Mimis. Give me a spell with the Pelicans trying to defend West's Tigers' invisible CEO Justin Pascoe around the sacking of Michael Maguire. The reality is it's now seven years and counting that Pascoe's allegedly had control of the steering wheel at Concord, without a single finals appearance. In that seven years the Tigers have sacked two coaches in Jason Taylor and Maguire as well as making the Pascoe-led ill-fated Ivan Cleary play. And don't get us started on the treatment of club legends Robbie Farah and Benji Marshall. What makes it even worse is the fact the only time Pasco has made headlines this year was by taking a week's annual leave to head to the Northern Territory after West's Tigers had started the season 0-5. Leadership? Not so much. The Sydney Roosters senior players led an honesty session with the NRL side leading into the round 14 showdown with arch-rivals Melbourne Storm. One player who was particularly singled out for a strong appraisal in terms of form was backrower Angus Crichton. While most of us thought Crichton's return to form was more in line with trying to win back his New South Wales State of Origin jersey, the appraisal from the Roosters leadership group also seems to have played a major factor. With New South Wales backrowers Tariq Sims and Ryan Madison set to be snubbed for Origin 2 in Perth, Crichton is now very much back in the mix in terms of forcing his way back into the Blues 17. South's captain Cameron Murray will replace Sims as the Blues left edge starting backrower but the Blues still need to find a backrower for the bench who can also spend time in the middle if necessary. Crichton fits the bill and a strong game against the Eels on Saturday night can rubber stamp his return to the Origin Arena. Axed West's Tigers coach Michael Maguire has wasted no time ripping into his role as Kiwis coach ahead of the upcoming test match against Tonga in representative round. Maguire was spotted in Canberra having a coffee with the Green Machine's Kiwi contingent including outstanding front rower Joe Tapini. Tapini's performance in a losing side against the Broncos in round 14 was out of this world and had the Raiders had some better direction from senior players they probably halt Brisbane's seven-match winning run. Raiders stars Jordan Rapana and Corey Harawira Naira are also expected to be in the Kiwi Test team. Another unsung player who looks set to force their way into the Kiwi squad is Penrith's hard-working back rower Scott Sorensen. The grand final winning forward flies under the radar in terms of making headlines every week but has been a brilliant find for the Premiers. It's a nice touch given the family history with his uncles Dane and Kurt being two of New Zealand's toughest forwards in the 1970s and 80s. 
The suggestion the North Queensland Cowboys are jammed for salary cap space throwing the Luciano Lalua deal into jeopardy is wide of the mark. The truth is the Tigers telephoned the Cowboys on Tuesday to double-check they were still interested in Lalua being granted an early release. The Cowboys crunched the numbers and then phoned the Tigers back to confirm they were in and would happily take the back rower effective immediately. The Tigers then got a little bit trigger happy with the media release, catching the Cowboys off guard because they were still to dot the I's and cross the T's on all of the necessary paperwork. Irrespective, the deal will go ahead. If the Cowboys can get Lalua to produce his best form, it's an outstanding mid-season pick-up for North Queensland. Even more so given young gun Harlem Lukey is out for the remainder of the season with an ACL injury. Despite being based on the other side of the world coaching St Helens in the UK Super League, Tonga coach Christian Wolf has done a brilliant job in selecting an extremely strong lineup for the representative round test match against New Zealand. Wolf has been in touch with the majority of the Tonga squad on a regular basis to the point where he's even selected a host of players who were either in the New South Wales Blues setup or in line for a call up. Winger Daniel Tupo, 5'8", Kodanai Stags, centre Sifa Talaki and backrowers Kian Kolaramatangi and Haumol Olakauatu were either in the Blues 17 for Origin I or on the radar yet Wolf has got them all to buy into the Tongan test team. In the case of Blues incumbents Tupo and Stags at left they had a major decision before they committed to New South Wales should they be selected in the lineup for Origin 2 on Sunday. It explains why the New Zealand Warriors are looking at Wolf as a leading candidate to replace the departed Nathan Brown for next season and beyond. Wolf will remain in the UK for the mid-season test match with Dean Young and Wayne Bennett to coach the Tongan team. Good sign, for Kiri in Roosters Boosters Knights expect Ponga to play. The Storm and Blues have suffered a blow with Ryan Papenhuysen cut from Melbourne's reserves due to a positive COVID-19 test that has ruled him out of the Broncos clash. Ryan Papenhuysen's return to the NRL will be delayed due to a positive COVID-19 test, the Storm said in a statement. The fullback was named on the extended bench for Storm's round 15 match with Brisbane on Friday night but will now have to spend seven days in isolation, having been replaced by young gun Jack Howard. Stags and Tupo commit allegiance to Fiddler's Blues following Tonga selection. Daniel Tupo and Kodanai Stags have decided to play for their state over country, ending the speculation surrounding their immediate representative future. Both players were selected to play for Tonga in the nation's upcoming test match to be played on June 25 against New Zealand. The clash fell 24 hours before Game 2 of the Origin Series and now, according to the Daily Telegraph, both have committed to playing their trade for Fiddler's Blues if picked. Now, Freddie has a huge decision to make on Sunday night when announcing his New South Wales squad for the crucial encounter. Well that is a good result for the Blues, look they both played game one, they want to be there for this series, Kent said. You know, the fact that Tonga have picked them, I think Tonga have known all along, it was only going to happen if they didn't get picked for New South Wales. Again it is just diligent management. But the good thing is if these boys don't get picked to play for Australia, they will be in the Tonga team for the World Cup, the Daily Telegraph's Buzz Rothfield said. That is a great thing for International Rugby League. While they have pledged their allegiance, that does not mean they are a certainty to be selected, with Josh Adokar coming into the frame after a string of strong performances and centre Stephen Crichton waiting in the wings. Does this mean they are going to make the New South Wales team? Anasta said. I think Staggs would be in a bit of trouble, I think Crichton is putting pressure on him for that centre spot, the Daily Telegraph's Brent Reid said. 
Tupo, I don't think he did anything wrong, I think he deserves to be there, it is just whether Freddy decides to go with Adokar. The other bloke, Sualiai, he was outstanding again on the weekend. There is massive pressure on those wingers though, the way Sualiai and Adokar have been playing footy, Rothfield said. At only 18 years of age, Fiddler would likely not be looking to select Sualiai for the Blues wing spot, but Rothfield believes he could be in for a shot. I think it is fair to say they are the two form wingers in the comp the last two weeks, both outstanding, I'd love to see Sualiai in origin, Rothfield said. It's not too early, why can't you just put him in? Toe has done nothing wrong, Kent said. I don't want to drop Daniel Tupo, but he is the one under pressure, Rothfield said. Anasta explained he believes Josh Adokar is the man to take Tupo's wing spot. I think the Fox has got him, five tries in two games, I think they put a rocket up him and he has really answered, Anasta said. I know it is tough, but the Fox was there first, they went with Tupo because they weren't happy with Adokar and he has fixed them. It's not fair, Dimitriou's blunt Latrell response shutting down Origin recall. Rabbitohs coach Jason Dimitriou has claimed that timing isn't right for Latrell Mitchell to return to the Origin arena. Dimitriou was clearly fed up with journalists' questions regarding his star fullback's fitness after he returned from a trip to America to work with renowned hamstring specialist Bill Knowles. Mitchell is yet to return to the field having been sidelined since round 5 and Brad Fittler would have been hoping he could have selected the dynamic ball runner for the second origin match. Now, Dimitriou has put to bed any questions surrounding Mitchell's fitness. I'm not going to discuss my conversations with Luttrell, Dimitriou said. Luttrell knows where he's at, I know where he's at, and we'll leave it at that. I think it's a bit unfair on Luttrell, as a guy who's going through nearly 10 weeks of rehab. He battled at the start of the season with a knee, and that led to a hamstring injury. That's where it's at. It's not on Luttrell that they, New South Wales, lost Origin I. It's not on Luttrell to get back any sooner than he's capable of playing. It's not fair to put him out there until he can do the job he knows he can do. I would love Luttrell to play Origin, and Luttrell would love to play, we all would. But unfortunately the timing isn't quite right. The Rabbitohs number one is eyeing a round 16 return against the Eels and if he makes it through the encounter will likely be available for Fittler to select for the final Origin clash. Dimitriou explained that as it stands, Mitchell is focused on recovering from injury and should be ready for Origin 3 if needed. It's not about whether he's playing Origin or he's playing for us, it's about whether he's fit to play rugby league at NRL level, let alone Origin level. And he's not, Dimitriou said. If he had a broken arm and it was six weeks out injured, we wouldn't be asking these questions. As far as I'm concerned he is going through his injury recovery. Nothing has changed for us. We hope to get him back and firing and fit and ready for Origin 3 if they need him. Billy coming back. Former Cronulla loose forward Billy Magulias is returning to Australia, having been granted a release from English Super League club Warrington Wolves for compassionate reasons. Magulius's wife Joanna Cambosos, younger sister of boxing star George Cambosos Jr., is expecting the couple's first baby in early November, which is believed to play a part in their return to Australia. Magulias, a Greece international, played 17 NRL games for Cronulla between 2019 and 2021, having come through their Newtown Jets feeder side. But his move to England was met with immediate obstacles, suffering a preseason injury requiring ankle surgery. He managed just 12 appearances for the Wolves this season before his premature departure. 
he took to Instagram to post, on to the next chapter. Thank you to the Warrington Wolves. NRL clubs could look to sign the big forward on a cut price deal as a cheaper alternative to Matt Lodge, whose NRL mandated wages have priced him out of the market due to club salary cap concerns. Vaughan deal done. Going the other way is Paul Vaughan, with the Canterbury Bulldogs player rumoured to be heading to Warrington as part of a sweeping club overhaul. Having only arrived at Canterbury this season, his 10th in the NRL, Vaughan has now signed with an English club in 2023, according to Bulldogs powerbroker Phil Gould. This season, Vaughan has appeared all 14 times and is averaging 131 running metres per game, his lowest since 2018. Bulldogs teammate Matt Dufty has also been linked with a move to Warrington, as has St George Illawarra forward Josh Maguire. Been a legendary buy, legend says Capewell beats Reynolds as Broncos best coup. Broncos legend Wendell Saylor believes Kurt Capewell has been the Broncos' most important buy, not Adam Reynolds. The duo have played a big role in Brisbane's stunning rise this season. The Broncos have managed to turn around a 15th place finish last year to sit fourth after 14 rounds fresh off a seven-game winning streak. Reynolds' kicking game, leadership and composure at halfback has stolen the headlines and has him in the box seat for many as buy of the year, but Saylor believes Capewell has actually been the biggest difference for the Broncos. Everyone said Adam Reynolds has been the difference, I know he's experienced in what he does, but I think Kurt Capewell, when Reynolds hasn't been there Capewell has been outstanding, he's been an absolute legendary buy, Saylor told foxsports.com.au while at the KO and Fox Sports launch for the US Open on Wednesday. Saylor, who played 189 games for the Broncos, also credited coach Kevin Walters for getting the likes of Reynolds and Capewell to the club. We know that Kevy knows how to coach but I think it's about getting the right people and the right players in your squad. Last year the knives were out for Kevy a little bit but he went out and bought some players that he thought could make the club better and I think he's a lot more relaxed. I've never seen Kevy so happy. I think he was tick-tocking the other day with his daughter. The Broncos' winning ways came under threat when the club was rocked by a bombshell release request from star prop Payne Haas 48 hours out from their round 12 clash with the Titans. The shock request came after negotiations between his management and the Broncos over an upgrade to his current $800,000 a year deal soured. The Broncos flatly refused the request and Haas has since declared his commitment to the club, however the 22-year-old was met by a hostile fanbase when he did run out at Suncorp Stadium for that round 12 clash. Saylor, who left the Broncos in 2001 for a stint in rugby union only to return to then return to the game via the Dragons, has been on the receiving end of booze at Suncorp Stadium and knows exactly how confronting it can be. For that reason he hopes the people advising Haas have his best interests at heart before making any big moves. I think the Broncos put enough things in place for it not to rattle them, Saylor said in regards to the release request coming five games into their winning streak. I love the Broncos so much but I didn't like that the fans were booing a young bloke. I know he's probably had some bad advice. I know the Broncos fans can be ruthless, trust me. I went back there with a Dragons jersey on and I got plenty of boos. I just want Payne to make the right decision in and around his football because it can derail his season and the way he plays. I think we just need to give the kid a bit of a break at the moment and his management probably just need to think long and hard about what they do. I think it's so different now for these young players. When we came through you had to earn that right to get the big money but now there's big money for young players. You've got 22 year olds like David Fifeeter on 1.2 million dollars, who wouldn't take that money if it's there? but pressure comes with that and their mental health is important. I've had two sons come through systems so I see it as a dad, but I also see it as a person who works in and around the game. 
there's a lot of pressure but that's where I think the management need to take some responsibility to help them out. Saylor was a part of a star-studded lineup at Moore Park driving range on Wednesday where he competed in a long drive challenge with fellow NRL great Braith Anasta, champion cricketer Alyssa Healy, Sydney Swans Tom Papley and GWS assistant coach Steve Johnson. Anasta was in his element and took out the win. I played competitive golf as a young fella and loved it. I think every person who doesn't play footy would love to be a professional golfer, he said. He was the main reason, Kikau's huge Bulldogs admission following Barrett's axing. Bulldogs recruit William Kikau has revealed his disappointment surrounding the departure of former head coach Trent Barrett, explaining he loved being coached by him at the Panthers. The 27-year-old barnstorming backrower signed with the Canterbury Bankstown Club on a four-year deal reportedly worth around $3.2 million. Barrett was employed as an assistant to Ivan Cleary for the 2020 season, before penning a deal with the Bulldogs that same year. Kikau emerged as one of the most damaging ball runners in the competition under his tutelage, which led to his signing at Belmore. Now, Kikau has expressed his disappointment that Barrett won't be there to greet him at his new club. I sent Baz a message a few days after that happened, and I wanted to check up on him, Kikau told the Sydney Morning Herald. He said he was all good. I always loved being coached under Baz when he was here. I really enjoyed it. When he went there to Canterbury, he was the main reason why I went there. He's not there now. With some coaches, you just know you communicate with them, you know you can trust them, and they trust you, too. That was the feeling I got with him. Hikau has been one of the Panthers' best this season as they sit atop the competition ladder, scoring six tries. Bulldogs fans have been eagerly waiting for the Fijian gun to pull on the blue and white strip, but as it stands, Kikau doesn't know who he will be playing under in Belmore. Interim head coach Mick Potter inspired his side to a huge defeat against the Eels in Round 14 and Rugby League Supremo Phil Gould will be hoping to secure a full-time coach in the coming weeks. Tongan Stars set for huge origin call as Kiwis swing axe on Warriors star, test teams named. New South Wales origin duo Kodonai Staggs and Daniel Tupo have been named in the extended Mata Maatonga squad ahead of the NRL's representative round. However, the Sydney Morning Herald reports the pair have not decided yet whether they will represent the Blues or Tonga next weekend. Meanwhile, Sean Johnson has missed out on the New Zealand side with Dylan Brown named and expected to debut in the halves with Jerome Hughes. Under the international eligibility rules, players can play for New South Wales and Tonga, a Tier 2 nation. However Tonga's test with New Zealand on June 25th is the night before Origin 2 in Perth. Staggs, who played in the centres for the Blues in Origin I, has been named at 5-8 for Tonga and Tupo, a Blues winger, has been named on the wing. Tonga coach Christian Wolfe told the Herald that he's happy for them to have a foot in both camps after speaking with New South Wales coach Brad Fittler but will need a definite answer by Sunday. I spoke to Freddie, and the last thing either of us wanted was for them to be left out of one squad and then not named in the other, Wolfe told the Herald. Nobody wants to see these two watching footy next weekend. You want to see the best players playing. I'm happy for them to have a foot in both camps. The rules allow them to do so. We'll meet again on Friday, and we'll obviously need an answer either way by Sunday. These two guys deserve their options. I also believe Origin shouldn't interfere with their ability to play international football, and for a country like Tonga that they have such a strong affiliation with. Tupo and Staggs will earn $15,000 if they choose to represent the Blues for Origin 2, and are selected again, or will earn $2,000 for playing in Tonga's test. Wolf is hopeful they pick New South Wales, but understands if they don't. 
We know we can't compete financially, but the pride in representing Tonga, and the pride they have when they come together, it's a big reason why these boys want to play for Tonga, he said. We just want them to make a decision that's right for them and their families. If that's Tonga, then great, if it's New South Wales, we understand the reasons why as well. Tukes has played with us since 2013 and played in nearly every test since then. Nobody would ever question his loyalty to us. His inclusion would also be a massive boost for some of the younger guys in our group who could find themselves in a similar position moving forward. Wolf is unable to attend the test at Mount Smart Stadium, New Zealand given he's in the UK coaching St. Helens. Wayne Bennett and Dean Young will steer the ship. Tonga have named an exciting 25-man squad that includes veterans Andrew Fifida, Jason Taumalolo and Sisiwa Takeaho as well as youngsters Manly's Tolu Kula and Panthers SG Ball player Isaiah Katoa. Meanwhile, Panthers duo Scott Sorensen and Moses Leota as well as Marita Niukore are among the potential debutants for New Zealand. Lalua says he's gutted to leave the Tigers, but Kent claims he backed the club into a corner. Paul Kent believes the Tigers had no choice but to let Luciano Lalua join the Cowboys early, but Paul Crawley believes the star walking out on the club midseason is another kick in the guts for Tigers fans. It's also been revealed that the Tigers attempted to get Cowboys hooker Reese Robson to the club in a swap deal for Lalua, but it didn't work out. The Tigers confirmed on Tuesday that Lalua had been granted an immediate release to make the move to the Cowboys, the club he had inked a three-year deal with for next season. It came after several attempts by the Cowboys to lure the 26-year-old to the club early. Lalua told the Sydney Morning Herald he was gutted to leave. I didn't want to leave because I wanted to stay and help the boys, Lalua told the Herald. Knowing that my 100th game is coming up, I really wanted to play it for the Tigers because that's where I've been for half of my footy career. I want the fans to know I'm a loyal man and it's not a cop-out, I was planning to see out the year with the Tigers, but this allows them to save some money. Kent, however, told NRL 360 that the Tigers were essentially backed into a corner and it was clear that Lalua wanted out. This has been a process for a couple of weeks, he said. I don't agree with it but unfortunately clubs have got to cop it these days. As soon as he decided that he wanted to go, his performances began to reflect that and it basically left the Tigers with no option but to say, well you've got to go now, because what they were getting out of them from a performance point of view was subpar. The Tigers did have the option of saying go back to reserve grade and sit there, but that means they've still got to pay him so there's no incentive, it doesn't help the Tigers, they suffer from a salary cap point of view because of that so they might as well let him go. Crawley acknowledged that it's a big win for the Cowboys given gun second rower, Harlem Lukey, is out for the season with an ACL injury. But he sees it as a major hit to Tigers fans and believes it reveals a lot about the commitment of the playing group. It works for the Cowboys but it's another kick in the guts for Tigers fans, he said. It just shows that their players aren't committed, or not all of their players are committed. How can you walk out on your team halfway through the season if you are committed? And as Kenty said, his performance on the weekend was below average. It was and that's why he had to go, Braith and Asta added. If he's not going to turn up and play like he should be, because he's a talented player and he'll have a lot to offer the Cowboys. They've lost the plot, Kent fumes as Storm Star's great escape exposes NRL's big problem. Storm Star Feliz Kaufuzi has been found not guilty of dangerous contact and has avoided a fine after fronting the NRL judiciary on Tuesday night. Kaufuzi was slapped with a Grade 1 dangerous contact charge for an elbow to Sam Walker's head in the Storm's win over the Roosters on Saturday. 
he faced a $1,800 fine with an early guilty plea or could risk a $2,500 fine if he fought the charge and failed. Kalfuzi entered a not guilty plea and appeared at the judiciary via video link where he won his case. NRL 360 co-host Paul Kent believes Kalfuzi was lucky to get off, but said the bigger issue is the incident only faced a fine and not a suspension. Even after we had the whole upheaval over summer and they threw out the book and started again, they still don't know what they're doing in there, he said of the match review committee. They've lost the plot, Kent fumes as Storm Star's Great Escape exposes NRL's big problem. Storm Star Feliz Kaufuzi has been found not guilty of dangerous contact and has avoided a fine after fronting the NRL judiciary on Tuesday night. Kaufuzi was slapped with a Grade 1 dangerous contact charge for an elbow to Sam Walker's head in the Storm's win over the Roosters on Saturday. He faced a $1,800 fine with an early guilty plea or could risk a $2,500 fine if he fought the charge and failed. Kaufuzi entered a not guilty plea and appeared at the judiciary via video link where he won his case. NRL 360 co-host Paul Kent believes Kaufuzi was lucky to get off but said the bigger issue is the incident only faced a fine and not a suspension. Even after we had the whole upheaval over summer and they threw out the book and started again, they still don't know what they're doing in there, he said of the match review committee. If you've elbowed someone in the head, which is what they're alleging he's done, it should be at least some time on the sideline, not a monetary fine. Whether you believe he's innocent or guilty is irrelevant in this case. The fact is, if it's worthy of a charge, it's worthy of a missing games for a deliberate act of foul play. There's no doubt Melbourne fight a smart case whenever they're the judiciary so well done to Melbourne and well done to Kalfuzi and let's just hope we don't see any concussions this weekend. The fact is the match review committee have lost the plot. They are continually siding with the offenders rather than those who have been damaged against them. It is unacceptable, you're trying to get this foul play out of the game and you come up with the softly softly penalties. Brayton Astor wasn't surprised to see charge overturned. They left themselves with their hands tied because really they couldn't possibly prove that this was deliberate, he said. So instead of saying he had made contact with the head and it's a suspension, the fine was never going to hold up. Kent put the blowtorch on the negligent match review committee and judiciary panel following the result. The judiciary was brought in with the players on the panel because they were supposed to understand the game from the players' point of view, he said. They're negligent in that area. The judiciary panel tonight was negligent in that area in finding him not guilty and I think the committee was negligent in not making a sterner sentence. The altercation between Dog's teammates that sparked a mind shift. The Bulldogs pulled off the upset of the season on Monday and an altercation between two players may have actually contributed to it. The Dogs piled 34 points on the Eels, genuine premiership contenders, and look nothing like the team that's been struggling for the last five or so years. It's now been revealed by News Corp journalist Paul Kent that rookie Jacob Carras had some stern words with teammate Corey Allen following the Bulldogs' round 13 loss to the Panthers. According to the report, some players sat around in the sheds after the loss feeling quite comfortable with it and Carras spoke up, letting Allen know how he felt about that. The two had a healthy verbal altercation in the sheds and it reportedly was a wake-up call for senior players too. It's a really good sign, Kent said on NRL 360 on Tuesday. In the dressing room after the game, what comes as a big annoyance for many fans is players having a bit of a joke and a giggle after they've lost a game. And Karaz at the time was only three games into his NRL career and he just cracked the SHS basically and they exchanged some words. He thought he should have taken the loss a little harder than he was. 
It created a bit of a feeling within camp that the young kids have had enough of the older blokes who are probably just too beaten down with defeat and so become too comfortable with defeat. I just think it sparked a bit of a mind shift this week, a shift in their attitude and whether we saw that. I'm not saying it was the sole reason. Raytha Nasta, who won a premiership with the Bulldogs in 2004, believes indeed Karaza's words could have been a wake-up call for his teammates. It's a kick in the ass if a young bloke tells you you're doing the wrong thing, it's a bit of a wake-up call and maybe the wake-up call they needed, he said. You can see the desire in Karaz. Karaz turned his back on a top 30 deal with the Knights to join the Bulldogs this season on a train and trial deal. He made his NRL debut in round 7 and instantly became a fan favourite. The 20-year-old has retained his spot in the 17 ever since round 11, when players outside of the top 30 can play NRL. He has also inked a top 30 deal for 2023 and 2024. Meanwhile, Corey Allen is just a few games back from a hamstring injury. He spent rounds 11 and 12 in New South Wales Cup before getting a call up to the first grade side in the round 13 Panthers loss. Cowboys land major coup as Tigers confirm Star's immediate release. The West Tigers have granted star second rower Luciano Lalua an immediate release to join the Cowboys. Lalua was already heading to North Queensland next season on a three-year deal but that move has been fast-tracked. The Tigers confirmed the release on Tuesday afternoon following reports from Channel 7's Michelle Bishop and News Corp. We wish Luciano the very best with his future, Tigers CEO Justin Pascoe said in a club statement. He and his family have made a lot of friends here at the West Tigers and they will be missed. It comes after News Corp revealed that the Cowboys were going to make another play for Lola to make a mid-season transfer after their previous attempts failed. The 26-year-old wasn't named in the Cowboys' side for Round 15 and instead will play his first game for the club in Round 16 against the Broncos, which will be his 100th NRL game. The Cowboys made the move on Lalua following the sacking of Michael Maguire. It's a huge coup for the club given Gun second rower Harlem Lukey will miss the rest of the season due to an ACL injury. Tigers star cops four-game ban for worst tackle of the year. Tigers center Brent Naden has accepted a four-match ban for his ugly lifting tackle on Manly star Jake Tobojevic after the match review committee hit him with a grade three charge. The NRL judiciary deemed the dangerous throw was a grade three offense and on Tuesday the Tigers confirmed he will enter an early guilty plea and accept the four-game suspension. If he fought the charge at the judiciary and lost he would have missed five games. However, rugby league great Michael Ennis believes Naden's tackle was worthy of an eight-week suspension after Naden was sent off for the dangerous tackle. With 15 minutes to go in Sunday's clash, Naden lifted Tobojevic over the horizontal and the Sea Eagles lock landed awkwardly on his head. That tackle got away from Naden, he checks on the welfare of Jack Tobojevic. That's horrible, Fox League commentator Brenton Speed said. Referee Peter Goff called Naden over to put him on report and send him off. He became the first Tigers player to be sent off in 20 years. It came after Naden spent 15 minutes off the field earlier in the game due to a HIA after suffering a head knock. I just wonder if he'll remember what's happened since he came back from that head knock because he let two tries in through his channel and now sent off for his tackle that went horribly wrong, Speed said. Steve Blocker, Roach, said Naden had put Tobojevic in a dangerous position and that it's a tackle that has to be stamped out of the game. That's a bad one, he said. To his credit though Jake, he got straight up, he knew it was an accident but you just can't do it anymore for the safety of the players. 
Naden's tackle comes six weeks after Manly utility Carl Lawton was sent off and copped a four-week suspension for a similar tackle on Rabideau's skipper Cameron Murray. Fox League sideline reporter Matt Russell asked Roach if Lawton got four weeks how many will Naden face. I think he'll be looking at a little bit of a stint on the sideline, maybe even more than four weeks. That one looked very dangerous, Roach said. However, Michael Ennis believes Naden should get a much bigger ban than Lawton. I think he's looking at eight weeks, he said. It was as bad a spear tackle as we've seen in a long time. No player goes out there to do that, but the fact is he lands on his head and it could have been a really, really bad outcome for Jake Tobojevic. I think he'll get a suspension around eight weeks, I really do. Tobojevic was all class when asked about the tackle after the game. I wasn't too bad, bit unlucky I reckon for Brent Naden. I know he didn't mean it, there was no malice in it and he was very sorry. So it was all good, Tobojevic said. But Corey Parker agreed with Ennis and suggested perhaps Naden may even get more than eight weeks. It was as bad as I've seen in recent years, he said. Jake Tobojevic, yes he got straight back to his feet and he said he was okay but the surprise on his face, he was scared there for a moment. I wouldn't be surprised if it was more to be honest. Break the Nasta added, that's the worst one of the year, he's in some trouble. Embarrassed Gutherson's brutal admission as ill skipper reveals Arthur's reaction to dog disaster. Parramatta Eels captain Clint Gutherson didn't hold back the morning after his side's most embarrassing loss this season. Losing to the Tigers by a last-ditch drop goal hurts, however to go down by 30 points against one of the competition's most disappointing clubs was humiliating, for a side tipped for success come September. Coming off a bye round and Origin players having five days to recover and recuperate, Gutherson was not out to make excuses. It was really embarrassing knowing that we just performed like that, Gutherson told Sky Racing's Big Sports Breakfast. They got a few lucky tries early and a lot of their tries came off kicks, look when they're going that hard and playing that type of footy you get those tries and that's the way that footy is. It just felt like we didn't go after the collision, we were trying to shift off the back of anything and we were throwing the ball out the back for no reason. It was extremely disappointing, Brad was pretty off it in the sheds after the game but look we can't really do anything after that game now, we've got to review it tomorrow and look at what did and what we did throughout the week. The Eels have confused fans and pundits as many predicted to see the blue and gold in the competition's grand final at the end of the year. Brad Arthur's men were the first side in the NRL to beat the Penrith Panthers this season, however their consistency is in question by not only fans but players as well. That's probably two or three games this year where we've really shot ourselves in the foot against an opposition that's at the bottom of the table, Gutherson said. We find a way to turn up when it's a big game in a top of the table clash but when we go to these little games where we're expected to win and we just can't turn up and play the footy that we want. We were really embarrassed coming off the field last night and look we get to go again this week but we've got to be able to have a tough conversation at training and see where it all went wrong. Moreover the Gutherson believes that Parramatta's lack of patience to reduce the deficit is where it all went wrong for the Eels. That's the thing at the moment once we get a couple of tries behind we're probably trying to chase the score too quickly, Gutherson said. Look I went for the all or nothing play in the second half and the Fox was good enough to pluck it out of the air and run away. It's probably just the mindset we get into when we get behind early that we need to chase points straight away but we know as a team we can score tries in bunches we've just got to drag them back into the game.
Even when we did that last night we got down there, we gave ourselves a chance to get back in and we were just dropping easy ball or forcing offloads, we just didn't feel any pressure whatsoever. Credit to the Bulldogs, they played great and came ready to go and came after us early in the game but Panga Jr was out there on a mission and we got stuck into what they were trying to do, got stuck into the push and shove but extremely disappointing. You've got to be able to move on pretty quick but look we'll have to have some stern words tomorrow in the review and try and find out what went wrong on the weekend and in the game. The Eels had three Blues players return for the clash against the Bulldogs, with the rest of the squad given five days off the week before with the bye round. Lack of time, preparation and rest was clearly not an issue for the Eels, something Parramatta's captain took complete ownership over. 100% we agree, we had a long turnaround after a bye as well so there was no excuse, Gutherson answered. Our Origin players had six days to come back and play. We were sitting in the sheds and we didn't even know what to say and how we did it but it's disappointing Loz. We've got a short turn around this week coming into a Saturday, we've got the Roosters who are playing good footy so if we turn up like we did against them Bulldogs then it's going to be an even bigger score. Look we're the only ones that can change it, nothing that the staff or anything like that have done because they gave us a few days off to get away from footy and to produce that performance is quite embarrassing, we're the only ones that can change it and we have to change it pretty quickly. While the Eels will no doubt be having those tough conversations when reviewing a game they'll hope to forget, they'll also turn their focus to the matchup this Saturday when they take on the Roosters at Combank Stadium. Drop Tigers star handed, fresh start, Dogs gun makes contract statement, reserves rap. Tyrone Peachy featured for the Magpies in New South Wales Cup after missing out on the Tigers 17, but he revealed he, and every other Tigers player, has been promised a fresh start from interim coach Brett Kimorley. Bulldogs fan favourite Jackson Topping once again got through a mountain of work and his performances are starting to put pressure on the club to re-sign him. Meanwhile, Matt Dufty is growing in confidence, James Seguiero scored a hat-trick and a Tiger and Rooster returned from injury, while the Eels copped two fresh injuries. Matt Dufty was back in action for the Dogs New South Wales Cup side after being dropped the week before. The 26-year-old fullback scored a try, set up another, got a line break and a line break assist to go with his 119 running metres. There were some ups and downs, it's just about growing in confidence, Dufty told Fox League. I know what type of player I am and I know what I can bring to a team when I'm playing full of confidence, when I get the ball and skip around I think that's when I'm at my best. Tyrone Peachy featured in the halves for the Magpies and revealed that interim Tigers head coach Brett Kamali told all the players that there's a clean slate, essentially opening the door for those who may have fallen out of favour with Michael Maguire. It was pretty sad to see Madge get fired, but Noddy's come in and shown real control and direction of where the club needs to be and it's exciting, Peachy told Fox League. There's a few disappointed players and everyone's a bit rattled but there's nothing we can do about it, it's a business and we've just got to move on. Noddy's come in and said from last week it's a fresh start for everyone so that's why it's exciting. I've just got to play my best footy to try and get myself back into the top 17. Peachy set up a try, got two line break assists and two tackle busts in their 40-20 win. Still on the Magpies, Oliver Gilded returned from a calf injury in the centres and finished with 122 running metres, a line break assist and two tackle busts. Speaking of returning from injury, Roosters hooker Sam Verrills played off the bench for the Bears after recovering from a fractured collarbone. The 23-year-old hooker set up a try, got a line break assist and a tackle bust in the 28 minutes he played. James Seguiero scored a hat-trick for Blacktown as he continues his push for an NRL return and Liam Knight featured for the Bunnies Cup side after missing out on Jason Dimitri who's 17. 
Knight played lock in the Rabbitohs' 26-10 win over the Dragons, finishing with 112 running meters, an offload and 25 tackles with zero misses. There was plenty to smile about in both grades for Bulldogs fans on Monday including fan favorite Jackson Topin running amok. Topin scored an impressive try where he beat four Eels players and also notched up 131 running meters, a line break and two tackle busts. The workhorse forward also made 33 tackles with two misses. Topin comes off contract at the end of this season and there's been no word yet on whether he'll be resigned. It's baffling given that was named the Clubman of the Year in 2020 at just 19 years old and said in an interview last year that he would go out there and die for the Bulldogs, ahead of his debut. Blackman Lamb was all class at 5'8 for the Bears, setting up two tries, getting two line break assists and six tackle busts to go with his 118 running meters. His teammates Ben Thomas was just as busy, playing 70 minutes at prop and finishing with 209 meters, 92 post contact, and making 34 tackles with three misses. Albert Hopoate and Trey Mooney shone as the Raiders knocked off a depleted Raiders outfit. Hopoate, while in the centers, scored a double, got a line break and eight tackle busts along with 205 running meters. Mooney dropped back to New South Wales Cup after making his NRL debut in round 13 and took back a heap of confidence with him. The 20-year-old ran for 170 metres, had 8 tackle busts and made 25 tackles with just one miss. The Magpies bagged their second win of the season against Blackdown, who their first win was over two. Junior Porga scored two tries and would have bagged a third when he ran almost the length of the field only to knock on at the end, but regardless the 26-year-old was impressive with three line breaks, seven tackle busts and 210 running meters. Young fullback Junior Tupo was also dominant with a try assist, two line breaks, five tackle busts and 123 running meters before getting an early mark to be the replacement player for NRL. New Brown got through 80 minutes at lock and had his fingertips on everything while finishing with a try assist, a line break assist, two tackle busts and 114 running meters. He also made 32 tackles with just one miss. Ipswich halves Ningara Barker and Lachlan Cooper pulled their weight but it wasn't enough with the Jets going down 30-40 in a high scoring clash with Tweed. Barker scored a hat-trick and ran for 181 metres, while Cooper set up three tries and had two line break assists. On the other side of the field, Will Brinson, older brother of Titans star AJ Brinson, set up two tries for Tweed and ran for 140 metres at 5'8", while fullback Ryland Jacobs got 239 running metres to go with his try assist and two tackle busts. Melbourne Storm utility Tyron Wishsart played 5-8 for feeder side, Sunshine Coast Falcons. He scored a double, got two line breaks and three tackle busts in the Falcons' loss to Burley Bears. Burley's fullback Tyne Tuapiki played a big role in their win, setting up three tries, getting two line breaks, three line break assists, five tackle busts and 162 running meters.